1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. How many know that Joseph fled some things? And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now, how many know that he was talking to believers? Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And now verse 12, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. You see, there is a fight. Even for believers, there is a fight. I'm so glad that Paul told us it's a good fight. David Engel said a good fight is a fight that you win. In one of his songs that has touched all of our heart. But it's not, there's not only a fight, it's a good fight, and it's fought and won by faith. Now, I have a message that should touch every heart in this room today, and it's as many messages. It's come over a period of time, but God has led me to share with you how to fight and win life's battles. We all face battles. Children face battles. Life is not as simple as it used to be. Saw three little children on the plane, and they were you know, amusing themselves. And I thought, you know, how wonderful it would be to be a child again. And then I thought of all the pain of growing up. I said, no, I think I'll just thank God for the experience that I have. The innocence of a child. Everyone in this room, sooner or later, we face the battles of life. Even a believer faces many battles. Now I know we're Excited about soul winning and victory and revival and all of that. But this is another one of those foundational anchors that keeps everything in place. We all face the battles of life. Even believers face many battles. The Bible said the way of the transgressor is hard. Paul said it's a fight, but it's a good fight. Now, there's a war that's going on, and yet many believers are oblivious to who and what the enemy really is. We blame it on hard luck. We blame it on our sometimes stupidity. You know, why did you do that? But I want to repeat that one more time. There's a war that is going on. In the midst of all the great things God is doing, there's a war that is going on, and yet many believers are oblivious to who and what the enemy really is. 1 Peter 5, 8 said, Satan goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, and it concludes by saying, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may. Didn't say he goes about devouring us. He's seeking for prey. And the way you stand against him is whom resist steadfast in the faith. Now all of us are either overcomers or we're being overcome. There's no in-between if you're a believer. You're either overcoming or you are being overcome, maybe by your own emotions, maybe by someone else that is whatever. But the Bible said we resist steadfast in the faith. Now, you know, every young person, teenagers, let me ask you a question. 
concerning something that you're facing, going through, or something that you're having a battle with, have you ever just drawn a line in the sand, as we say, and say, that's it. In the name of Jesus, from this moment forward, that will not rule or reign or take my total focus and attention. Have you ever declared war on a weakness in your life? Have you ever declared war on a besetting sin? Well, that's just the way it is. Have you ever declared war on financial battles, negative thoughts, bad habits, health battles, marriage challenges, challenges in raising our children? I mean, some parents don't have a clue as to what's going on. And many do. Listen, folks, Satan has a plan for your kids. And you better have God's plan for them and follow through with God's plan. Because they're not going to turn out just like they're supposed to turn out. I was looking at some folks up in Canada and the way they dress and you know, their background. I'm not going to call who they are, but, you know, they're kind of a, uh, they're born again. Or at least they teach being born again. But, but I said, well, what about their children? Someone said they're mean as devils. I said, what? Because they just let them do what they want to do. No resistance. And just because you don't wear jewelry or makeup or, you know, just because you don't look a certain way doesn't mean that your children are going to turn out. In fact, you can go to church every Sunday and it doesn't mean your children are going to turn out okay. And sure not if you don't go to church. Have you ever just drawn a line in the sand and say lust is no longer going to ruin my life? I'm no longer going to stop and look at certain things buying my groceries. A young man I talked to just a few days ago, his entire life was changed. He had a brother. They encountered something pornographic. And his brother said, look at this, look at this. He said, I refuse to look at that. I belong to Jesus. Today, the brother's life is a mess. And this young man is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, God would have brought him through if he had failed on that occasion. But what I'm saying, folks, you know, we're in a day, we're going to have to draw a line in the sand. Either you're going to serve God or not. In fact, the Laodicean letter said, I would that you were cold or hot. For if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You know, it's not heaven or hell. It's just putting yourself through hell on earth. The way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the believer that believes, it says a shining light gets brighter every day. So have you ever just drawn a line in the sand and about besetting sins, marriage challenges, health battles, financial battles, negative thoughts, bad habits. You know, even in marriage, there's things that you know that you say, that you do, that you project, that your marriage would be better off if you just crucified your flesh and say, I'm not going to say that again. I'm not going to do that again. You know the very word that can create World War III. You know the very you're just like your mother. <laughs> Bam! And the H-bomb is dropped or the atomic bomb is dropped. <laughs> you know the very word that you can say. Okay. Okay. Now. Bam! <laughs> and then it all goes upside down and you wonder, why did the devil do this to me? No, you did it to yourself. I tell you, building a New Testament church is not always a piece of cake. In fact, I was just thinking the other day, thinking of some very difficult times that God's brought us to. If I'd had to fight and wrestle with a religious deacon board, this church would never be where it is over these, uh, these many years. We've come through some tough stuff. And I'll tell you, I've tried to lean on the arm of flesh on more than one occasion. And I found out you better just stand on your faith and faith people that stand around you and see it through to victory. Thank God that God can see us through. But I mean, there's time after time, and, and I still have 
I still have battles. You know, we all face battles. But there's times about this church, God knows how many times you just have to draw a line in the sand and just say, we're going to do it God's way. We're going God's way. We're not going to stop and yeah, yeah. We're going to keep on going forward. We're going to build on those that want to build. We're going to build on those that appreciate what God's doing. And God has been so gracious to see us through. Now, how to fight and win life's battles. My children face battles. My grandchildren face battles. Your children. If you have grandchildren, your grandchildren. There's not one person in this room, no matter how victorious a life you live, that you don't make choices that either determine whether you win or lose a battle. No matter how old you are or how young you are, and we need to teach our boys and girls how to fight and win the battles of life. Now, here's five Bible insights to fight and win battles. And I was just reviewing it and flying back yesterday and going over it. And, oh, I believe we have an insight here that's going to help you. How do you fight and win life's battles? Are you going to give in at every turn? You're going to quit? You're going to compromise? What are you going to do with life? No, whether you live for God or the devil, you're going to fight battles. The difference is when you have Jesus as Lord, you know that if you hold steady with Bible principles, God will see you through. And there's a blessing and there's a reward for that. First of all, recognize that you are under attack. Recognize that you're under attack. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. is such an awesome portion of God's word. It's said in verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, really, verse 12 is for point one here that I just got through mentioning. Recognize that you're under attack. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your battle is not with flesh and blood. But it's against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in high places. That's what your battle's all about. And I don't mean that everything in the but you're smart enough to know the difference of what I'm talking about. When, when things are coming down, don't just beat yourself up. Don't just get all bummed out. Don't get all discouraged or disenfranchised with, with what God's doing. Recognize that you're under attack and we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And that way you won't waste words and energy of what's this all about. I tell you, since the storm, I think I've faced some of the strongest battles of my life in leadership, as a leader, what you do, how you do. And even in the last year or so, it just seems like there's a birthing of greater things that we're in the process of, but you've got to keep yourself headed in the right direction if you're going to see the rest of the camp head in the right direction. Sometimes we want everyone else to do something, but we must keep ourselves focused and recognize that you're under attack. Some people don't have a clue. Wicked spirits in high places. You know, we're in the end time. And I believe with every fiber of my being that Jesus is coming soon. But there's a war going on. There's a political war. There are wicked spirits that operate in the political realm, that operate in the intellectual realm, so-called. I mean, if you could just, your eyes could just see all the conflicts that are going on in this world, you'd realize why there's so much confusion. Journalists are confused. The news media is confused. There's a lot, really the only people that have their heads on straight are believers that believe the word of God. We're under attack. 
businessman told me in a restaurant recently, I mentioned it in a former service. He walked up, shook my hand, thanked me for this church and thanked me for our Christian school. He doesn't attend our church, but he's, he's a believer. And he said, do you realize that you're raising a counterculture? And I had not quite thought about it that way. Through our school and through the church, we're not blending with society. We're not floating down the stream with society. We are building a counter culture. Boy, when you travel, do you see children need discipline? And if we don't discipline them in a godly, in a correct way, they grow up to be problems down the line. Recognize you're under attack. Number two, put on and keep on the whole armor of God. This is not a cute little saying. Put on and keep on the whole armor of God. Now having two daughters especially, and you have them all dressed up for church, and you go back to get them and call them to the automobile, and they have had a different idea about their wardrobe. I don't know if guys are so much into that, but uh, some guys are getting pretty picky nowadays. But put on and keep on the whole armor of God. Why? That we may be able to stand. Folks, either we're going to overcome or we're going to be over. We're either overcoming or we're going to be overcome. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, etc. and so on. But the Bible said, verse 13, we're for take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to with, withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You can do it. By God's help, you can do it. You can be strong in the Lord. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Rumors will not get it. What I think about it, what you think about it, doesn't get it. It's truth that's going to see us through. What is the truth? Your loins girt about with truth having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I can't believe my feet are so tender. I see these kids running around barefoot <laughs> on gravel. <laughs> it just hurts me to watch it. <laughs> and I step out with the, to get the morning paper and one little pebble <laughs> How did my feet become so tender? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Are you still into that faith stuff? Man, you can't make it if you're not. No way. Taking the shield of faith, take it and take the helmet of salvation. The battle is still in the mind. For as a man thinketh, his heart's so easy. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the shield, the shield and the sword, praying always with all kinds of prayer and supplication of the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Put on the whole armor of God. All right, I'm under attack. I recognize I'm under attack. And I go back and make sure that my wardrobe is in place. Have I been so busy working for God that I forgot to put my helmet on? Have I been so busy for God that I left my shield somewhere along the way? The error comes in. Have I been so busy that my sword, my shield are not in place? My loins are not girt about with truth. And I'm getting into rumors and how I feel, feelings. Thirdly, 
resist the devil and he might flee from you. James 4, 7 said it. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do you do that? No. No. Well, the devil's been talking to me all day. Well, what have you been talking to him about? No. No, that's not my thought. No, that's not my feeling. No, that's not my inclination. No. Go peddle it somewhere else. I'm a blood-bought, blood-washed believer. No. What don't you understand about no in the name of Jesus? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Refuse to take the path of least resistance. I thank God for a mother that just wouldn't quit. Just wouldn't let go. Man, she prayed for me. I'll never forget the night she told me, she said, over my dead body would you go to hell. <laughs> That's strong. She was strong. She wasn't a tall lady, but she was a strong lady. She said, you belong to God. I've dedicated you to God. You'll go to hell over my dead body. Man, sitting there in the middle of that stairway going to the second floor with her Bible open. I'm trying to slip past her because she's a little asleep and I know the steps that squeak and those that don't, you know. <laughs> Boy, I could never pull that one off. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So how many times should I resist him? Till he gets the message. He's a little dense, but he does catch on after a while. No! No, no, you have to get radical with what I'm talking about today. Folks, we're in a war. Do you understand we're in war? I see these young men in the airport, their fatigues. Some coming in for two weeks, they're going right back. They're involved in warfare. They may be home for a few days of R&R, &R, but I mean when the time's up, they leave their families, they leave their children. There's a war going on. And you look in their face, and it's on their mind. It's in their, it's in their heart. And I'm telling you, church, church, there's a war going on. And I'm trying to make everyone conscious this morning. It's, there's not a devil under every green tree, and everything's not the devil. We do stupid things that bring stupid results on our own lives. But I'm talking, you know when you're under attack. You know when you're under attack, or you should know. Or at least have a clue that we're, our family's under attack. Our marriage is under attack. Our children are under attack. Our grandchildren are under attack. And, and, and it's war. But Jesus has already fought and won the battle over 2,000 years ago. It's war. It is war. But I mean, if you're just in la, 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 well, that's just the way things are. That's the way things are going to be. And they're going to get worse and worse and worse. In churches. I'm telling you, you talk about a challenging day to pastor. There's every kind of an idea, Heinz 57, soup to nuts. It's happened in this congregation, but I know a pastor's wife where I was, she, she uh, spoke to a hairdresser, and she attends a church where anything goes, you know, and they don't give altar calls. They believe in Jesus, but they don't give altar calls. Well, if you never give them a chance to come to Jesus, and, of course, they're usually the fastest-growing church in the community. If you want to know more about Jesus, just blink twice, you know, when the pastor's closing the service. We'll send someone to indiscreetly not embarrass you. She said, have you ever accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? She said, I don't believe I know what you're talking about. She said, I mean, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart? Do you know if you died today, you know, that you'd... Go to be with the Lord. She said, we've never been taught that in our church. And yet there's supposed to be an evangelical church. We're living in a strange day. Anything goes. Amen. From what you drink to the way you live to whatever. I'm not being negative. I'm just, you, you, you ought to try being a pastor with all the ideas that are floating around today. Anything goes. Anything doesn't go. 
There's a consequence to sin. And that's why there's so many things the Bible said, even if you're born again, don't do it. You put yourself on the railroad track and then blame the train for running over you. Get off the track. Don't go to the wrong side of the freeway. You'll be a casualty. Folks, it's real. And the good thing about it, I, I, I got to stay away from that last point because it's so positive. But I'm telling you, there's a war going on. There's a war going on for boys and girls. There's a war going on for teenagers. There's a war going on for young married couples. There's a war going on. Are we going to give God our best? Are we going to, you know, are we really going to serve God? There's a war going on if you're retired. You don't get too old for there not to be a war going on. We all face stuff in life. But I'm telling you how to win. Isn't that good? Not the gospel of ought to, the gospel of how to. Recognize that you're under attack. Put on and keep on the whole armor of God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And then the next point that I'd like to bring out is stand and withstand. Well, I tried that once. No, you stand and you withstand. You stand on days when you feel like standing. You stand days when you don't feel like standing. You stand on days when every bone in your body screams out, you fool, you fool, you fool. And you say, no, you're the fool. I'm the wise man. I'm the wise woman. You serve him uphill, downhill, good days, bad days. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, when you're young and when you're old, you serve God. You do the right thing. And if you fumble, if you drop the ball, you just say, forgive me, Lord. Turn right around and say, we're going at it with all that we have. Stand and withstand. Keep on standing. As I said, 25 years and all the times that I've been there, I looked at people and I, I told some people, I said, thank God you didn't quit this church. I'm talking about the church where I've been. I've watched them. I've watched their children, now grandchildren coming in. Oh, there's such a, there's such a beautiful thing when you just drive a stake and say Satan's not going to steal, kill, and destroy from me what God has given to me. God didn't give you those children for cute little things to have fun with. Better a child was never born than to birth a child for hell. And it's almost like parents are afraid of children nowadays. I see that. In travel, you see a lot of things. This thing is emphasized every time I travel. It's a, it's a different world out there. And, of course, you see the same thing. But God gave you those children. One day, I will give an account for Susan for the way we raised and did our best to raise Susan and, and Janet. One day, I'll give an account. I was talking to one of our grandchildren the other day. I said, God put me in your life. Take advantage of it. God gave you a granddaddy. Take advantage of it. That's one way you can take advantage of me. One day I will give an account. Did I just sit there and say, well, that's just the way things are. You know, aren't they cute and aren't they sweet? And everything they do is just perfect. My little darlings, no, they'd never tell a lie. No, my little darlings. Oh, if they said it, that's just the way it is. Bubblehead, dear God. I don't care how sweet they are, they're not perfect. And you better be sharper than that. Because one day we will give an account. I say, Pastor, give us a break. You just got back in town. Well, stand and withstand. I don't want to be a wimp. I don't want to wimp out. I don't want to be a little Wally Cox pastor. I don't want to be one that just says, well, just whatever makes the people happy, just whatever makes the youth happy, whatever makes the couples happy. It's the truth that sets us free. It's the truth that sets us free. And there's times before you discipline a child, it looks like all hell's breaking loose. But then there's a relief after discipline. I said there's a relief that comes after discipline. There's a relief when you do the right thing. Oh, you ready for the last point? I know you are. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us. 
By faith, expect victory. Don't expect the worst. Don't expect defeat. Expect victory. Think it. Believe it. Spit. Just like David before Goliath, can it get any more impossible than a teenager looking up at a big giant, a proven man of warfare, telling him exactly what he's going to do? Goliath said, this is going to be a sad day for your mama. David said, no, it's your mama that's going to get the sad message. No, it's your mama that's going to have a bad message today. Because you come against me with a sword and a spear and a shield. But I come against you in the name of the Lord. Get that victory mentality. We win. Because he has already won. We win. 1 John, the fifth chapter, verse 4 said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the way we overcome. This is it. This is the way we overcome. This is the way we fight and win the battles of life. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. 1 Corinthians 15, 37, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't a battle of fatalism. God promises victory. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 6, 11, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, I look in the mirror and I don't look like much, but I look into the mirror of Jesus and I'm Superman. Ha! Whoa, do I bulk up when I look into the mirror in the name of Jesus. So, saints, there's a war going on. How many understand there's a war going on? In every one of our lives, if it's not now, it will be, or it has been, and, you know, this is the cycles of life. There's a war going on. Yet, thank God, if you'll recognize when you're under attack, put on and keep on the whole armor of God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you because sin is no win. Stand and withstand and by faith expect victory. Overwhelming, glorious victory. Just keep on fighting. We win. The back of the book says, we win. Looked over in a seat across from us and a young teenager, her eyes were glassy. She read Harry Potter from Calgary to Dallas, Fort Worth. And I don't, I don't have any way of knowing whether the parents believed anything, but I thought, oh God, oh God. If you have any Harry Potter in your house, go home, throw it away. Amen. I mean, she was, she was like she was hypnotized. Well, that's what, that's what it does. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if from Calgary to Dallas-Fort Worth, that girl could be reading the Word of God into what God has said about life not what little Harry says. Personally, I just want to punch him out when I see his picture. I just, it, it challenges my sanctification because I know what's behind it. I want to say, Harry, I've got something better than your little stupid wand. 
This is the light. This is not a flashlight. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is not a flashlight. This is the light. And when I wave this wand, every demon in hell backs off. No flashlights for me. It's the light, the light of the world. I'm on to something. It's so simple, you can't miss it. All right, class, how many realize we're all in a battle of some kind, some kind? All right, there's two dozen don't have a clue yet, but we're going to work on Now, that means I'm going to have to preach another hour here. How many recognize we're all under some kind of attack, huh? Anything you're battling? Any flesh battles? Any mental battles? Any, uh huh? Well, uh, (laughs) heard a preacher say his office was so small he had to go outside to change his mind. (laughs) Well, anyway. It's, it's all right. There's nothing wrong about it. Uh, Let's just dress a little bit here, huh? You got on the whole armor of God? Got on that helmet of salvation? That's okay. Got on that breastplate of righteousness covering your heart, vital organs of your body? Your loins girt about with truth. Don't give me rumors. They say, what? No, what did Jesus say? I can't build on rumors. My feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Got your shoes on? Oh, thank God. Thank God for that sword and for that shield. The word of God in faith. I'm telling you, Satan can't take you out if you'll just put on and keep on the whole armor of God. And sometimes we forget, and just like the little children before they go to church, you know, they they got a different idea about wardrobe, but keep on that whole armor of God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You know, you have to get violent. You need to get violent. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stand and withstand. Oh, Brother Nichols, I just get so tired. I know, I know we all get tired, but there's no other way to go. Stand and withstand. And by faith, expect victory. Think it. Believe it. Speak it. Just like David before Goliath. Or just like Jesus in the wilderness when he said, It is written. It is written. It is written. For this is the victory that overcometh the world in which you live and I live. Even our faith. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're in New Zealand. It's the most precious group of people. I guess you'd call them New Zealand native people to that land. Maori people. And I mean, they're just... I think God's going to send the next move of God to New Zealand through these people. They they are in every church. They're hungry. They're teachable. They're they respond. It's just awesome. It was a one of these gentlemen that heard us minister in Sunday morning and drove two and a half hours and rounded up ten of his family that weren't born again in Auckland and said, "Do you really love me? Yeah. Do you really respect me? Yeah. All right. I ask you one thing. I'll never ask you for another thing. Go to church with me tonight." And he went. They all were lined up that night. Hallelujah. I had Charlie give the altar call that night and I said, stay with it, stay with it. And finally, all 10 of that family came to Jesus. <laughs> but you know, during the war, they were, World War II, they were fearless fighters. And what really made them mad was that the Germans the Japanese were coming to take their land. I mean, that got them more than anything. They're coming to take our land. Land was, you don't mess with our land. And while the soldiers would go with their guns and all the implements of war, many of them would go out painted like warriors. Now, they don't wear this all the time, but I mean, they'd get on the front line and have spears and do their chants 
And I mean, they welcomed me one night, and I was glad they were for me, not against me. I mean, they, they gave me a, a real special greeting that night. But they said, the Germans would they'd look up, and, and here comes this wild bunch screaming and dancing. And I mean, they're, they're a serious bunch, you know, when they'd go through that little ritual. And they thought they were cannibals, so they'd just jump up and run, man. They, they forgot their guns. They forgot their hand grenades. <laughs> I mean, these people were, you know, really, what do they have? They just see them coming, and they're screaming and yelling and going through all the tribal stuff they go th- when, when they do that. They don't do that all the time, thank God. But, whew. And they said they were fearless fighters, and the Germans just couldn't handle seeing them come after them. <laughs> I said, you know, bless God, that's the way it ought to be. We don't fight with earthly stuff. Thank God we fight with Ephesians 6 stuff. And we go into battle and sometimes we scream and sometimes we shout and sometimes we dance. (laughs) We shout and we say, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come against you in the name of Jesus. And Satan can't handle that name. 